What's up everyone, it's Tyranitar Tube and welcome back to another Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire coverage video. After throwing out a ton of news at E3 from gameplay to new Mega Evolutions, Nintendo's been getting the quiet down for a few weeks until they decide to drop another news bomb on us. But while they were releasing these trailers, they've also been updating their official site with new screenshots and information that weren't included in these trailers. So let's take a look at these new additions in depth and see what information they hold. Let's start off with this guy, Mega Sableye. It was revealed a week ago and the Pokemon site has finally updated its profile and stat changes and its ability. It gets a defense and special attack boost while losing speed and its ability is Magic Bounce. Prankster was already trouble enough and with its improved defenses and a very shielding ability, it's gonna be a huge threat. Moving on to the screenshots, let's start off chronologically. This is one of the first scenes in the game when you arrive to the Hoenn region and step out of the truck. You can also see what appears to be Route 101 in the distance. In this image, you can see the redesigned rooms for the two protagonists, obviously following the graphics from X and Y. Notably, there is a Wii U by the TV instead of a GameCube, and a town map on the wall. Many people are expecting this map artwork to be the actual in-game town map, but that's just official artwork done, just like this for X and Y. The map will probably look more like this fan-made image based off the X and Y map design. Images of other cities and gyms were also shown. This screenshot shows the player in Rustboro City and inside its gym. The gym itself looks like it maintains the same maze-like pattern with trainers at your inconvenience, but the low-angled view showing the entire depth of the gym gives an epic feel, and the giant skeleton resembling an Aerodactyl or the Dragonite from Pokemon Black and White adds to that. We did see brief gameplay of the Acrobike and the Mach Bike, but a lot more shown in these images. First off, we can see the player using the Acrobike to jump from platform to platform in Route 119, and we can also see the player riding the Mach Bike up a mudslide in Granite Cave and also across Cycling Road, which looks amazing, especially with the transparent floor. The unusual part about some of these areas is that it doesn't quite match up with any existing locations in Hoenn. This leads fans to believing that these either belong to a new area or they're gonna redesign design certain areas, but from the looks of it, they're probably going to be redesigning new areas. But I actually like the idea of redesigning, because they can give more use to things like the Acrobike instead of having only a few exclusive areas. These screenshots showcase the Team Aqua Magma battle at Mount Chimney, and it looks amazing. Seeing this area in 3D, especially the Pokemon fighting outside of their Pokeballs just looks too good. It gives us the idea on how it'll look like and feel like to have Pokemon following you in these graphics. But don't get too worked up about it, there's obviously a reason that they didn't make Pokemon follow you, even if it's in their reach. All this 3D can cause lag as we've seen with Pokemon X and Y during certain scenes, and it was sort of expected for that mechanic to not return in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Steven can be seen deep in Granite Cave and in the Cave of Origins studying Ancient Evolution and Mega Evolution. The inscriptions on the walls depend on your game, with Primal Ground on one and Primal Kyogre on the other. And with that meteor existing on both screenshots, fans have made an unusual theory stating that the meteor is actually Bird Island, and Deoxys will become obtainable in both games but it's just a theory. He can also be seen again on this bridge, and the only interesting thing about this screenshot is this. It's a hole in the wall that could be turned into a secret base. There was speculation going around that secret bases wouldn't return, but with this, it's confirmed. And with how frequently he appears in the game, some fans feel that Steven will be the one to give you the Mega Bangle, as it is called in this game, and very early on. The main character can be seen wearing it in one of the trailers at the very beginning of the game, both on the overworld in this location, as well as when Mei's sending out a Torchic. This leads fans to thinking that we may receive the Mega Bangle as early as right before our first gym battle, but on the other end, this could just be a mistake on Game Freak's part. In a corrected screenshot posted on the site, the Mega Bangle doesn't exist on Mei, and doesn't exist on Brandon's left hand as he sends out the Pokemon as well. Game Freak has made mistakes like this in the past, so it's safe to assume that we probably won't get the Mega Bangle this early on in the game. These screenshots showcase the battling system. Pokemon no longer pop up in front of you like an encounter in X and Y, but rather to the side like in the original Ruby and Sapphire games. The Pokeball can also be seen thrown from a first person point of view. The battle scene itself is at a lower angle than X and Y and adds a more retro look from the original games. And finally, the Pokedex in this game differs from the X and Y Pokedex and is based off the design from the original games, and the option at the bottom seems to allow you to switch back to the X and Y design. I don't know why, but I just really like this Pokedex design. 
But that's it for these new screenshots. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Let me know what you think about Arias and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire being recreated to have new designs with more in it. There's a lot more Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire coverage to come, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.